We're committed to quality and to adding value in every aspect of our work, and we strive to exceed the expectations of our customers. Looking professional helps my patients know that they're being cared for by a real professional, and that alone can make them feel better about the service and quality they will receive. In my case, looking professional means covering up my tattoos. Especially in these security conscious times, my ID badge is one of the most important things I wear. It should be easily visible to anyone I talk to and worn in a way that's appropriate to its importance. That means I don't write on it or put stickers on it. The appearance of our medical center is our responsibility. So if I see a piece of trash, I pick it up. In case you need to call back, that extension is 2523. Sir, I'll transfer you now. Thanks for calling. Oftentimes, my voice is the first and the most lasting impression someone will have of our hospital. So when I answer the phone, I always identify myself and my department to the caller. I explain what I'm going to do so they understand that I'm tending to their needs. I always thank them for calling. Excuse me. Good morning, Altabate Summit Medical Center. Registration, this is Robin. How can I help you? Whenever I address a patient or family member, I speak to them with respect. That means calling them sir, ma'am, or miss. I try not to use technical words if I don't have to, and I try to be as clear as possible. Clear communication is a great way to relieve someone's anxiety. So we try to explain the entire process to them, and if there is an unexpected delay, I make sure to tell them about it right away. And to be sure they are comfortable and taken care of, I offer them a place to sit and let them know where the cafeteria and closest restrooms are located. Coming to the hospital can be frightening or at the very least inconvenient. I try to be the best part of a person's day by being as helpful and polite as I can. With elevators, that means holding the door for them, offering to push the floor button if I can, and if they need help finding their way, I'll take them there myself. As they say, safety really is job number one. Always use the appropriate protective gear and use proper body mechanics when lifting and moving things. And it's not enough just to be safe. If you see a condition that's unsafe or something that's broken, it's your responsibility to let someone know about it so it can get fixed. Infection control is key for the safety of both our patients and our staff. We treat those we serve and one another with concern, kindness, and respect. We're going to pull the curtain, Ms. Haynes, to give you a little privacy. You know, it's important we treat our patients with kindness and respect and always tell them what we're doing so they feel cared for and safe. So when I'm working with a patient or her family, I put their comfort and privacy at the top of my list. When a person feels vulnerable, her privacy is even more important to her. We act openly and truthfully in everything we do, and we follow the Sutter Health Ethical Code of Business Conduct. And let's just bring this back to the desk. People have an expectation and a right to privacy where their personal information is concerned. This is the most personal information we have, and our patients trust us with that. No one wants their information unprotected. We take that responsibility as the guardians of their medical records very seriously. So we do everything we can to keep their information just between us and the patient or their designated family member. This hospital is committed to the highest business ethics, and we work as a team to assure 100% compliance. We are very aware of health care costs and work with each patient to provide service that is respectful and open. We work together cooperatively, recognizing that the power of our combined efforts exceeds what we can ever accomplish individually. 
being part of a team means that if I'm not at my best, my team is not at its best. So that means I work when I'm supposed to work and show up on time because in a hospital, every job is important. It's not just the patients I'm talking about. My coworkers are counting on me to be there and to be there on time. If I'm not there to do my part, it makes it harder for others to do their jobs too. And everybody's job is important to the whole. When you're at work, you're in the public eye. Always speak positively about team members and the organization. We acknowledge our vital role in the communities we serve, and we seek to understand and exceed their needs and expectations. The hospital takes great pride in identifying the health issues of our community and in the educational programs and services we offer, such as mammograms for disabled women, prostate screening through our parish programs, and a world-class stroke center. We also encourage getting involved in the community by volunteering or participating in the medical center's community benefit activities. Our service excellence standards are a tool to remind us to always keep the patient or family member's perspective as our focus in creating a memorable experience. Please remember, our job is to take care of people. Our patients have the right to feel confident and informed about their care. To help us remember this, our staff develop these tools. Customers and patients come first. Acknowledge and greet others. Reach out to help and follow through. Initiate contact and communicate. Nurture others. And finally, give attention to detail. Our service recovery standards are a tool to help us work through any missed expectations or opportunities with our patients, visitors, or family members. Even when we are all trying our best, things can go wrong. When a patient or family member is upset, we need to take action immediately. When things go wrong, there are four steps to remember. The first thing to do is listen. Don't interrupt. Sometimes a sympathetic ear is all someone really needs. The next thing you need to do is apologize. Of course you're sorry it happened, but they really need to hear the words. This doesn't mean that you're taking blame, just that you acknowledge that something didn't go as expected. Next, tell the patient what you're going to do to help address their problem. Then do it. If possible, give them updates about what you've done. Finally, thank them for their patience and for bringing the issue to your attention so that we can try and correct it. And always ask if there's anything more that you can do. Sincerity is really the key to successfully handling a patient complaint.